It's September and this is the best total body workout. Grab your moderate dumbbells and let's go. All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. Have your dumbbells completely out of the way and let's get started with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend and around here we are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feel like self-love. And sometimes it feels like self-love to just itch your ear real slow. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> guys, you know what actually really feels like self-love? Ah, a workout like today. I love today's workout. Today is a Metcon, which might be a new word for you. It's just, it's a shortening of metabolic conditioning, which is honestly just a fancy way of saying that we're doing cardio and strength today. <laughs> like we're getting it all done. We've got cardio and strength, the aforementioned items. We've also got a little bit of balance work and, and the reason why this is the best total body work workout is that today is knee friendly. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. I don't have any squats or lunges for us, but I do have lots of challenging single leg work, which is honestly, okay. You guys always ask me about this, like, oh, you know, what should I do instead of squats and lunges? And I'm like, oh, just do any kind of a kick. And then you're like, well, but am I really getting the most benefit out of my workout if I'm not doing the squats and lunges? And here's the thing. I'm a girl who happens to love squats and lunges but I'm going to tell you something. Standing on one foot, doing a little bit of balance work like we're going to do today with the kicks that we're going to do today, arguably better for you. Truly, this kind of work is so good for keeping us on our feet for the rest of our lives. You guys, let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because welcome to my home. I totally did that backwards. I mean, I did everything I was supposed to do, but I don't normally go this way. Because ordinarily I say, welcome to my home, and welcome to Blossom's home. That's so weird when we do something just a little bit different. Ah, yes, let that be foreshadowing for today's workout. Here's what it looks like. I've got the handy dandy gym boss. Set for intervals of 30 seconds of cardio and one minute of strength. Technically speaking, there's no rest and that's why it's metabolic conditioning because we're getting our heart rate up and then we're slowing it down with slow moving strength work. But truly, take today at a pace that feels right for you. Like 30 seconds, kind of a long interval for cardio. A minute, definitely a long interval for strength. Move at a pace that feels right for you and don't worry about the transitions in between exercises. In fact, let's go ahead and get started because the first thing that we're doing is just walking. And I say just walking, like it's not the world's most perfect exercise in the world, but what I mean is, we're not doing anything complicated with our hands or feet, which is why it is just walking. There's enough other, like, kind of complications today that I really wanted to just start us off on a nice easy note and this is where I'm going to go with this. At any point in time, if you have trouble with anything that I am doing, come back to walking, come back to whatever kind of dumbbell work feels best for you. We're going to start with cross body crunches, which means that we've got the dumbbells here in our hands, up at our shoulders, your opposite elbow crunching towards your opposite knee, crunching right in the middle. Now here's the thing, we're thinking about pulling in our core, sitting up straight and tall, using your big lats, your back muscles to pull your elbows out wide to the side, and we're not really curling down into this crunch. You're bringing your knee up as as high as you can and your elbow down as low as you can while still standing upright. I know that sounds complicated and that's why we're thinking about it. This, my friends, is the brain-body connection. We're thinking about where our body is in space and time. We're thinking about using the big muscles that we're trying to use. Now, when it beeps again, we're coming back to walking. We're going to put our dumbbells down and we're going to come back to walking. Today is a repeating, no repeat, meaning that we're going to do this pair of exercises twice before we move on to the next thing, but then we're not coming back to it later in the workout. Really making sure that you're breathing. Ah, here we go. Dumbbells down, watch your tail blossom. And then we're coming back to walking. So this is what it's like today. We're gonna bring our heart rate up with the cardio part, and then we're not gonna really bring it down at all with the strength. No matter how heavy or light you go, I'm going moderate that is best for my personal goals right now. I suspect that it's best for you if you are here for weight loss or maintenance. If you are here for body shaping, you might go a little heavier. Be very, very cautious and cognizant of the fact that if you are going heavy today, here we go with those cross body crunches again, that you are going to need to take to 
tomorrow as a rest and recovery day. You guys, you are responsible for making sure that you recover properly from your workouts. Me personally, that's why I like to go moderate every day. I love to work out. Love, 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 love. I actually struggle with taking time off, rest or active rest. I would, at this point in my life, much rather maintain my weight, maintain my fitness by just going moderate every day. That way I get to work out every day. I get to enjoy my exercise every day. When it beeps again, by the way, we're putting the dumbbells down and we're doing low swinging heel digs. Oh my gosh, and don't mind that really loud noise. That's Rosie who's scratching her scratchy pad that she never plays with. That was so fun. Rosie is 17 and so she doesn't really play a lot anymore. And that's fun when she does a little bit. So here we go with low swinging heel digs. Hands are swinging from side to side. It's down low, meaning that it's not going over your head, but honestly, they're coming up pretty high out to the side here. We're kicking out one foot in front of us at a time. You could get some real swing into this if you'd like to. Totally up to you to make the most or the least or the moderate of today's workout. When it beeps again, we're gonna grab those dumbbells because that's what we do. We're going back and forth between cardio and strength. We're gonna do a step back side raise. So we're thinking about this. Hands are down at your side. We're gonna step back with one foot and the opposite hand is coming up into a side raise out to the side. Notice the big change in timing here. We're not trying to go fast. This is not a cardio move. Your heart rate's still going to come up because that step back is all about balance. That side raise, oh my gosh, is all about those, relatively speaking, small muscles on the top of your shoulders, your biceps and triceps as well. Generally speaking, those are helper muscles. When we use them as prime movers like this with a side raise, it's pretty challenging. And that, my friends, is why I go with moderate weights. You are always welcome to pick up heavier weights, lighter weights, whatever weights work for you, no weights at all. Truly, truly, anything you do, any kind of targeted movement where you're thinking about your brain-body connection, you're pulling in your core, you're breathing rhythmically, you're thinking about what you're doing. Here we come back to those low swinging heel digs. That, my friends, is you working your body, moving your body, toning your body, increasing the health and fitness of your body. Moving in a targeted way at all, at all, is going to increase your fitness, truly. And I know that sometimes we think, no, 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 I've got to work much harder. I've got to really like lift heavy. I've got to go for a certain amount of time. I've got to do this, that, or the other thing. My friends, what you've got to do, what is the best thing to do? Here we go again with that step back side raise. Find your core. And here we go. Step back, side raise the thing that is best for you, truly best for you, is to be consistent. To be consistent in a way that feels best for you and helps you get your goals. Coming back to that body shaping thing. Now I know that I don't talk about that as much as I used to. I used to talk about, oh, you could do this for body shaping or that for weight loss. There is a difference in how you structure your week for body shaping versus how you structure your week for weight loss. When it beeps again, by the way, we're doing high knee punch-ups, which is exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna do high knees and one of our hands is going to punch up at a time. I'm gonna try really hard to punch my opposite opposite hand and my opposite knee. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I tell my brain, or my brain rather, tells my body what to do. Sometimes my body just says what it's gonna do. <laughs> in fact, my body always does what it's gonna do, but sometimes my brain is really in control of it. Ah, there we go. Punch up, high knees, awesome job. But here's the thing. The workout itself, not structurally different, depending on what kind of goal you're going after. For me, my maintenance goal means that I'm doing all the same exercises that you are doing for weight loss. In fact, I'm even doing them the same way that you're doing them for weight loss. If I were trying to do body shaping right now, trying to gain muscle right now, here we go with deadlifts. I'm gonna grab those dumbbells, palms facing your body. Stand up nice and straight and tall. Push your hips back. Keep your back super duper straight. Really thinking about your core pulling in so your back stays straight. Really thinking about your glutes, your butt muscles, doing the prime moving here. Pushing your hips back and pulling your hips forward. The thing is, the exercises don't change when your goal changes. What changes is how you structure your whole week. If you are trying to gain muscle right now, 
And I mean like, like gain a lot of muscle, not just like get fitter or like, when you're losing weight and you're exercising every day or when you're maintaining your weight and you're exercising every day, you're probably still gaining muscle, but not at the rate at which I talk about with body shaping. Body shaping really specifically means that it is your prime focus. It is your main goal. It is the thing that you are trying to do with your body is to put on muscle. When it beeps again right now, we're doing those high knee punch-ups again. <laughs> That means that you need to structure your week differently. You're still going to be consistent. I mean, consistency gets you everywhere you want to go, but you're going to be consistent in a different way. Every day, you're going to be working out in a way that makes sense for your goals. It means that one day a week, you're going to push. You're going to pick up something really heavy. And then the next day, you are going to have to recover from that. And it might even be that you have to recover for two days, sometimes even three, depending on your push. Here we go with deadlifts again, second and final time. When you are paying attention to your body's signals, working within your body's biological realm, <laughs> which is what I'm trying to do right now too. Being moderate every day is not something that I used to do ever. But the reason I do it now is because this is what works for my body and my brain, my goals. My fitness goals right now are not what they were a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, it's all about pushing myself. Now I'm all about pushing myself to be moderate, to maintain my weight and to enjoy this level of fitness, this level of strength for as many years as I possibly can. When it beeps again, putting these dumbbells down and we're doing double knees, both hands up over your head. Going to bring up one knee at a time, twice in a row, bringing your hands to your knees and your knees to your hands, <sighs> meeting in the middle making sure that your core is pulled in just like it is for these deadlifts. And up a daisy put those dumbbells down and back to cardio. <laughs> I'm always singing on the part where we're going back to cardio, right? <laughs> I know, because cardio is my favorite, just like strength is my favorite. They're both my favorites, which is why this is my favorite kind of workout. You guys, when it beeps again, we're doing triangles. Another one of my favorites. I really, I stacked the deck today with like almost all of my favorite exercises, the ones that can really, really get every single part of your body. Okay, dumbbells in each hand. Feet almost uncomfortably wide. We're gonna put one hand up overhead, palm facing out, the other hand palm facing your body, and then we're gonna roll that dumbbell on down the side of your leg, as low as you can get. You're gonna push your hip out while you're doing that. I am actually leaning forward a little bit as well because that's where I can get that cross section of mobility, flexibility, and strength. Hi, sweetheart, how are you? Sweet Rosie. This is Rosie. She's 17. She's almost completely deaf. Therefore, she has no, no noticing that I'm talking or doing anything. She just wants to see what's going on. <laughs> Actually, Blossom's really deaf now too. It's kind of funny how when the animals were younger, oh my gosh, making sure you're breathing. When the animals were younger, they were all afraid of like every single noise, every single everything. And now with two of the three of them, and me as well, here we go again with double knees. Really, of the five of us who live in the house, me, my husband, and the three animals, four of us are deaf. <laughs> One of us, Agatha, the young cat, she still hears everything. She still jumps when the doorbell rings. She still knows what's going on on the TV. She still knows when I'm vacuuming. But now when I'm vacuuming, I can't hear my husband talking to me. He can't hear me talking to him. The animals don't hear it at all anymore. <laughs> It's pretty funny living around here with loud noises. Here we go with triangles for the second and final time. <laughs> Feet almost uncomfortably wide. Core pulled in nice and tight. Thinking about this work, oops, only one hand up overhead. Thinking about this work coming from not just your abs and obliques. I mean, definitely it's coming from your middle, but it's also coming from your whole hip complex, your inner and outer thigh. Very involved in this work as well. <sighs> when it beeps again, <sighs> Ah, we're gonna put those dumbbells down. And my friends, we're doing forward hinge arm flappers. Pretty much my favorite thing in the world because they're basically deadlifts without any weights in your hand. It's a cardio deadlift. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> That's Rosie's other thing that she does now. She's meowing so loudly. She just really likes me to know that she's using the litter box. She thinks it's very important that everybody knows where she is and what she's doing at all times. <laughs> you guys, getting older, is super fun, am I right? Watching my elderly pets get older 
also entertaining in its own way. Here we go with forward hinge arm flappers. So hands are doing jumping jacks, your lower body doing that deadlift. Again, pushing back with your hips, pulling forward with your hips. Your butt is doing all this work and your hands are flapping while your butt is moving your upper body forward and back, you guys. Actually, well, okay, technically it's moving your lower body forward and back, but you notice when you push your hips back, your torso basically has to come forward. It has no, no recourse other than to come forward. So keep your back nice and straight. Now, when it beeps, just like it did, we're going to do front punch, high knees. So weights start right here at your shoulders. We're going to bring up one high knee and the other hand is going to do a front punch. Core is pulled in nice and tight as we are pulling ourselves out of balance here by having something even moderately heavy in front of our body as well as standing on one foot at one time and you're going across your body like this. This requires concentration. This requires you to bring the balance all the way up into your core. Not thinking about just standing on one foot. You're thinking about standing on one leg. Feel that whole leg, feel that work come all the way up into your glutes and even bring it into your abs. My friends, when your center of gravity is in your center, your core, you will be so much more stable. Being stable, <laughs> I mean, it's highly overrated, right? <laughs> like mentally stable, but being stable on your feet is the name of the game. You guys, here we go with forward hinge arm flappers for the second and final time. Being stable on your feet is truly, I'm, I'm going to say that that is now my number one fitness goal. You know, for so many years, I was so concerned about getting faster, going longer. I was, uh, well, I'm going to say I was an ultra distance runner. I'm not discounting that I might ever do that again, but I am not currently training for or even planning on any more ultra distances. But my goal is that when I do run, when I do anything, is that I'm going to stay on my feet. Here we go with those front punch, high knees for as many years as I can. I watch my mom get more unsteady on her feet as the years crawl by. And I worry, I mean, she's fallen a couple of times and I worry about that being me. I am not blessed with a lot of natural balance. So I practice it every chance I get, which is for me every day, <laughs> every day I do something moderate. I do something that's within my bounds. I do something that I can recover from without taking days off. And I do something that challenges my balance. You guys, when it beeps again, who doggies, we're doing can cans, it's a knee and a can on one side and a knee and a kick on the other. Make sure your core is pulled in nice and tight with this front punch high knee. You notice, I've noticed, I think I'm sweatier on the strength sections than I am on the cardio. Here we go with a knee and a kick and a knee and a kick. You can get your hands into it or not into it. You can kick as high as you like or as low as you like. My friends, make this workout work for you. No matter what your goal is, because here's the thing, we actually spent quite a bit of time talking about body shaping today, which I don't usually do because I assume that lots of you are here for weight loss. The great thing about weight loss, oh my gosh, like the thing that I love about weight loss is that you can do exactly something like this. Here we go with curling side kicks, elbows plastered to your waist. They are not moving away from that waist. As we curl up, we're bringing up one leg out to the side. Now here's the thing about this side kick. Sometimes it's a real kick. This is almost more like a side raise of your leg. I'm thinking about raising my heel off the ground. Do you feel how that brings that work all the way up into your glutes, up into the side of your butt, your side butt area, if you will. And that leg that you're standing on, bringing that work all the way up into your glutes, up into your abs means that I'm not really thinking about my arms at all, except that of course you want to think about your arms as well, making sure that you're curling in a way that is not pulling those elbows away from your waist. Having your elbows locked into your waist really isolates more or less, even though nothing works in a vacuum, nothing works all by itself, but isolates your biceps muscles so that you're really targeting them. You guys, when it beeps again, here we go, can cans for the second and final time. <laughs> You guys, here's the thing about weight loss and weight maintenance by doing something moderate every day. It really is this fun. I mean, I love body shaping. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I am enjoyed. I have an entire series of body shaping for years and years and years. That's the way I trained. I absolutely trained with a push day and recovery days. And I was always, I was always feeling a little bit 
like I was working. Here we go with those curling side kicks again. Now, now my workouts are just fun. This to me is like my, it's like my, my present for all those years that I worked out hard, that I pushed myself to do more. All the lessons that I learned from pushing myself hard totally apply to bringing myself to this moderate space. I love that I did all that work for as many years as I did. And I also love that I work out moderately now. <laughs> It's such a gift to myself. You guys, when it beeps again, we are done, but we are not quite finished. I have a built-in finisher. So it's another pair of exercises that we're doing exactly like this two times in a row. So when it beeps again, we're gonna do letter K's, which means that we have our hands up overhead. We're going to reach one hand and one kick out to one side. On one side, it'll form the letter K, more or less. You have to use your imagination for this, certainly. <laughs> But on one side, it's the letter K. On the other side, it's not. My friends, make sure that your core is pulled in no matter what exercise we are doing. Knowing where your core is and what your body is doing, here we are with our letter Ks, is the point of what we do. You know, exercising, super fun. We get a lot out of it. We work certain muscles. You know, we're shaping certain parts of our body. We're losing weight from our body. We're doing stuff with it. But really, the goal of exercise is to be aware of your body. When it beeps again, oh my gosh, that's why this is the finisher. You're gonna put your hand, weights in your hands and we're gonna do oblique pull downs. When we're doing this as cardio, you would call them swimming frogs. Weights in your hands, up overhead, palms facing out. Ooh, doggies, pull those elbows out wide and down. And as we do so, one knee comes up and out to that side. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna concentrate. This balance got tough. This work got tough. Good thing we're tougher. This is the gift of all those years of difficult exercise. As I've learned how to train my brain to focus and pay attention. If you do not have the gift of ultra marathoning, my friends, you can still develop that focus, that brain body connection at any time, at any age, with any level of weights by simply paying attention. When it beeps again, coming back to those letter K's. Excellent job keeping those elbows wide. That's your big back muscles forming this work. Whoopsies, I'm trying to do kind of do a jumping jack there. No, we're doing letter K's. Yes, what I wanted to do was lower both of my hands. I did this on purpose, my friends. This is tough work for your big back muscles. And I know that sounds really funny to think about your big back muscles being important for balance and for staying on your feet, but having your back muscles involved in keeping you upright standing upright helps you pull in your core when you stand upright with your shoulders back when your hands up over your head you can pull in your core more effectively you can bring your balance up to your abs more effectively there is not one single part of your body that works alone we're always always working it all together when you work your upper body you are making your whole body stronger my friends the next time it beeps doggies is the last time it's gonna beep let's think about finishing this out super strong pulling from your big back muscles to keep your hands and your elbows rather out wide for this pull down when you have your hands up overhead biceps are right next to your ears really thinking about where your body is thinking about pulling this balance work all the way up into your abs what a nice job you've done. Still breathing. Ah, and that was it. Excellent, excellent job. Weights go down and let's cool this down. Oh my gosh, what a good job you did. Let's go ahead and do some arm circles. I know, I know, we just had our hands up over. You can do more like wider arm circles rather than like up high arm circles, but thinking about letting those muscles come back to where they should be. This is why we do a cool down, my friends. We just bunched up our muscles a whole lot, asking them to do even, even moderate work. We've asked them to work. Now, when we cool down, we wanna stretch them back out and let them know that it's totally okay to come back to their normal position because otherwise your muscles might stay in that bunched up position and then that's when we get knots in our muscles that's when we have a lot of tension in our shoulders letting your shoulders relax and stretch out after your workout is one of the ways to release that tension one of the other ways
ways to release the tension is honestly to manage your mind. I mean, it has nothing to do with weight loss, but it has everything to do with your whole life is managing your mind. Actually, it has a lot to do with weight loss as well. <laughs> you guys, there are five things that we do every day for weight loss. Managing your mind is one of them. Exercise is one of them too, exercising moderately, but there are three other things. And right here on screen, I've got the video that explains it all. Let's go ahead and open it up wide and then close it up. Give yourself a big hug and a pat on your sweaty back. Oh my goodness, what a good, good job you did. Here on screen, of course I'm gonna have a longer cool down for you. For those of us who like to cool down just a little bit more, a little bit of walking, a little bit of stretching, really getting your muscles back to their normal state so that we don't have to be sore tomorrow, so that we can do something either, I mean, not exactly like this. In fact, tomorrow, tomorrow I've got a fun one for us. Every day this week, I've got another fun new video for us. The first week of every month, I have a seven day series and today was only day two. You guys, make sure you subscribe before you go and I'll see you tomorrow.